All right, so it is July 18th today, and the horse flies or deer flies are finally getting terrible. It's just that time of year again. They're always really bad out here, anyways. I'm gonna be putting in our uh, or one of our actually our second to last uh, brassica food plot here, here, and then also I'm gonna be putting the rest of that bag because it's like a half or it's a quarter acre bag, and the rest of it's gonna go another food plot on the other side of our property. That, that one is a new food plot. You can go back and I just created this. Uh, this early spring cut it all out like in April brand new food plot this is the first year we're planting that one so I'm, I'm gonna add both them in this same video so uh, like I said this was all pre sprayed off you can tell it's dying off real nice I sprayed it about a week or so ago and uh, I'm just gonna spray and seed it what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna seed it down then I'm gonna come through with the drag with the tines down and kind of rip it up a little bit just to kind of work the seeds in because a lot of this it's like 90% oats and wheat I know those seeds are a little bigger. I'm gonna mix in some dank and radish with them too. So well, all I know is the wheats and oat, they need to, oats, they need to be uh, you know, a little deeper in the soil. It's not usually best if they're sitting on top of the soil. So I'll, hopefully the drag will work them in good. I just don't want to disc it, you know, cause that's just gonna till up a ton more weeds. So uh, yeah, that's the plan. Like I said, this is about 90% oats and wheat. So that's why I wanna somewhat loosen up the soil, kind of work the seeds in with the drag in a little bit. But uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to be seeding in here. And I will be mixing in some dank and radish like I have in all of our other food plots so far. So I'm standing in plot number two here. Uh, this is a new food plot I created this uh, late April or so. I cut it out, it was all buckthorn and just brush and kind of useless stuff. And the reason why I made this food plot here is because there's a ditch right here and the deer would cross the ditch from the neighbors and God, there's just horse flies attacking me anyways. There was a trail that was coming. We had an old ATV trail right here. God. And um, it kind of overgrew. And uh, the deer were walking here out to our other food plot, the Field of Dreams. Out there we have about um, three quarters of an acre of corn and about half acre of beans. So it's going to be a heck of a winter food source and just a food source in general. And this will be like a great little spot to catch the deer on out to the bigger food source so I can exit out of here too without spooking it. I already uh, pre-sprayed this. So all, all I have to do is broadcast the seed and then uh, work it in with the drag a little bit. So. finished up both these plots tonight I'll uh, update you or you'll see me again once we get some growth here don't really expect to see any growth for at least a week or a week and a half but uh, hopefully this stuff comes up good this is the first time I've tried out this product um, yeah I guess I'll see you next time guys all right so I made it out to plot number one of uh, Antler King's lights out I put two of my I guess you could call kill plots into lights out this year um, this is just all spray and seed it looks beautiful um, all I did was come in here and spray it about a week prior to planting and then I and then I waited a week I broadcasted my seed and then I ran the drag through to kind of work the seed in a little bit and when I sprayed it was already dying and it's cool you can still see the brassicas in here from last year these big dead stalks all throughout the whole food plot and I might have screwed up a little bit because I thought that lights out food um, mix had a 
some winter rye or winter winter wheat but it turns out it's just all oats which really ain't the best because as soon as you get some hard frosts the oats are just they turn brown they're done but uh the good thing is the plot i mean the the mix had plenty of brass because i mixed in some da daikon or tillage radish or whatever you want to say they got multiple names I, I mixed in some of that dankin radish with this food plot too so there's plenty of uh brassicas in this food plot it's not just oats but like I said, the oats are going to die out. It would it would have been better if it was um, like winter rye or winter wheat because that'll stay green way way longer and it'll grow and germinate in way way colder temps than that than the oats will. But the oats will be I guess a little better earlier season attraction. But I don't really know how much the deer are really going to eat on them here because they got tons of food everywhere. Even back here in these shady areas, it looks really good. I mean, really, this stuff doesn't really get a ton of sun and it's coming up. The brassicas are, they don't really do the best in the shade, but you can tell that the oats, they look pretty good, but out there in the sun, it definitely does look better. But overall, the plot looks good, except for this little bare spot right here where there's a lot of weeds coming in. But the deer love to browse on these weeds, whatever they are. I think it's like water hemp or something. But there is brassicas in here. These ones will just get more room to grow, but the weeds might interfere with that a little bit. So this is kind of the worst spot of the plot also. Right here, I don't know if I just missed that area or if nothing grew, who knows. But overall, besides those two areas, the rest of the plot looks fine. Really, really looks good. And if I look in here hard enough, I can see a few areas where it looks like the oats are already, you know, bitten off. That's probably from deer, maybe from turkeys though. Maybe rabbits, who knows what it's from, but there's some areas in the plot like this where I can already see browse from something. Hopefully it's deer, because if they're browsing on it now, they're definitely gonna be eating on it, you know, later in the season, and October, November, I mean, uh, September and October, but by November, like I said, this stuff's probably pretty much burned out and browned out, so, because it's not winter wheat or winter rye. So for 20 days of growth, almost three weeks, this stuff just looks pretty darn good. No fertilizer, it just spray and seed. This soil was pretty damp when I put it in and we've had tons of rain. So it's done pretty good so far. And uh, my tree stand's just right up that way. So I can catch these deer coming out to this food plot. I can shoot down that way and shoot in here. So once they get off that way, I don't have to worry about spooking them. I can just exit and go up that way. So uh, I'll take you over to the plot number two here. And then this is probably, this might I might update with you one more time, but if I don't, I don't, so. Here we are, this is the second lights out food plot, and this one looks just as good. Looks very similar to the other one, grew up really, really nicely. Although I'm not seeing as much browse already on the, uh, on the oats, which really ain't. I think the other spot where the other food plot is a better, is a better spot to hunt in general. I just made this uh, little uh, kill plot here. This is the third, third and final kill plot that we've created over the years where we cut off everything and put a nice little hidey hole kill plot back here just because of the field our bigger food plot which is about an acre 1.2 acres is right out that way with corn and beans and some brassicas but uh, like I said this one's probably a little too thick um, it ain't really gonna feed them into the winter that bigger field out there will this will just be a nice little hunt plot stuff is really big right here, I don't know why. It's really coming in thick, growing fast. You can see some of the areas where maybe I was driving around, it actually came up really good right there where that stump is. I probably didn't really need to drag it at all, unfortunately. But every every year you plant food plots, you learn something new, because just look at that. There's a big stump there, and obviously I didn't really drive or drag over that too much, For the other areas where it's flatter, where I was driving more. Look at that. Not as good a germination. And the stuff's smaller too. Maybe it's just because it packed the soil down or something. I don't know. All I did was spray this too and rip it up with the drag and then seed it. And then I ran over with the drag again. Kind of work the seeds in hopefully. I left these couple of buckthorn trees here just so deer can beat the heck out of them. Maybe rub on them and stuff. There was some other ones here that I mowed down too. But this is where I'm thinking they come in from because they... They had a trail through here before I made this food plot. You can see some fresh tracks here.
but they come through usually down here and go into the neighbors. So if they cross here, come through this nice little linear food plot right out to our bigger field, maybe I'll get a shot at one or just see, it'd just be cool to see some deer in this plot. I probably won't hunt this area as much as some of the other areas we got. This is probably my, uh, out of the four main stands that I have, this is probably the least desirable spot. The last spot I would hunt out of the four, but I'm definitely gonna hunt here sometime. Hopefully a couple times. I know it's hard to get out because I hunt a lot of different areas and it's not really good to over hunt your own property. Anyways, that about wraps up this video guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. This is another no-till brassica video and I'm really starting to like this method guys. Like, first of all, you couldn't really till this up anyway because I have roots. Basically, you see how thick all this brush is? That's what all this used to look like and you can go watch that video. It's on, up in the top right corner of the screen. If you guys haven't seen it, that's basically the creation of this food plot. But uh, yeah, there's stumps everywhere through here. It would have been really hard to till this up with a disc or a rototiller or anything really. So the spray and seed method kind of is what I had to use and it turned out great actually. Look at that huge stump right there. There's just stumps everywhere in here. It took forever to cut this out. And this is just a tiny little food plot here. So uh, really hope you enjoyed the video guys. Um, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe and I guess uh, see you next time guys in the next food plot video. I got more coming, so see you then.